This video is brought to you by Squarespace. Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Maham and I crochet cute things. Today we're going to be creating what I like to call crochet paintings. I know that intros are usually really talking heavy and most of you guys skip them, but I highly recommend not to skip this because the intros are where I go over most of the frequently asked questions. So most of the questions that you guys have after watching the video, I've usually answered them in the intro. Step one is to pick the pixel grid design that you want to create. Now I've got a Pinterest board and I've saved over a hundred free pixel grids for you guys. There's text, graphics, characters, it's there, everything's there, and I update it almost every other day. I'm always scrolling on Pinterest, so whenever I see a cute pixel grid, I just save it to that board. So the link is in the description box. I highly recommend that you scroll through it, find one that you like, and then we'll get started. Now if you want to create the ones that I did, I have linked them, I've kind of compiled them in a neat little blog post which is in the description box, everything's going to be in the description box and you can just refer to it for all the useful links that I talk about. But if you want to create the ones that I've created, I've also got a special pattern on my coffee shop. So I did all the work for you, I went through hours of counting, I counted every row, I counted every box of every color and I organized it into a neat little pattern that you guys can just follow after learning how to switch colors, how to attach a new color, and basically after going through the rest of the video. So if you don't want to spend hours or if you don't want to waste your time counting every row, counting every box for the designs that I make, I've already done all the work for you and the link is in the description box. Now let's talk about yarn and hook. I used a 4.5 millimeter hook for all of my tapestries. That is my favorite hook to use for nearly all of my projects. It is my go-to for everything. And then for the yarn, I used a cotton mixed with acrylic yarn. I highly recommend using acrylic yarn for crochet accessories. It's pretty sturdy and it's pretty soft as well. So the one that I've used is linked on my Amazon storefront. I've got a bunch of different shades there that I normally often use. And I wouldn't recommend anything smaller than a 3mm hook and nothing larger than a 6mm hook. However, depending on the look that you want to go for, so if you want a tapestry that's kind of puffy and thick, go ahead, use a 6mm hook. If you want something that's really thin, really, um, I mean flimsy, but not in a negative way, in like a flimsy, like a really thin tapestry, then of course you can go ahead with a 3mm hook, it's completely up to you. My point here is that do whatever you feel comfortable with, whatever you want. So once again, as with all of my other tutorials, nothing is set in stone, nothing I say is what you have to do. I highly encourage you to use whatever you like and find your own techniques as you're going along. I'm just here to guide you and show you what I do so that you can find the best way that works for you. Once you've picked your grid, you're going to go through the rest of the video. I have divided things with timestamps, useful timestamps, so you can always refer back to the timestamp that you want to watch. I'm not going to be crocheting a single tapestry. I'm going to be showing you examples of different ways on how to work on your tapestry. What this does is that it gives you an idea of what to do when you're starting off how to follow the pixel grid, how to switch colors, how to attach a new color, how to switch colors on the front side, how to switch colors on the back side, how to switch with multiple colors back and forth and back and forth. So I've got a ton of examples for you to go through, for you to watch. I highly recommend watching this whole video first. I know it's probably gonna be a really long video, but I highly recommend going through at least once, at least go through the video once to watch the different examples and then once you feel like you've got a grasp or you've got a good understanding of how this works then you can crochet along with me. Another question that I get asked a lot is whether you can sell the pieces that you make with my patterns and tutorials and my answer is yes you can. You can create products and pieces using my patterns and tutorials and you can sell them on your business. But I only ask that you tag me as the pattern creator or give me inspiration credits in any relevant social media posts. You can tag my Instagram, you can tag my TikTok, or you can just put my handle. And for all the crocheters out there who have their own business or who want to start their own business and sell their crochet pieces, or if you want to start selling patterns or create a website to showcase your work and share your patterns with your audience, I would love to talk to you about today's sponsor, which is Squarespace, an all-in-one platform to create your online presence, build your dream website, and launch your passion project. With a huge range of various and customizable, easy-to-use templates, you can start your online store or business to sell digital and physical products. Whether you're just starting out or growing your business, Squarespace has all the tools you need to start selling online. Drive sales and engage your audience with Squarespace email campaigns. Introduce your brand to new subscribers with welcome emails, announce an upcoming sale, 
engage your audience with subscribers-only content, or send your top customers a discount code. Squarespace also has member areas where you can connect with your audience and generate revenue through gated, members-only content. For example, a membership for crochet patterns or exclusive content and video courses to share with your audience. So if you'd like to create a website of your own, I highly recommend that you head to squarespace.com, try it out for yourself for the free trial, and once you're ready to launch, you can use the link in the description box to save 10% off of your first purchase of a website or domain. For the explanation, I'm going to be following this cat wearing a frog hat thing. Of course, it is linked in the description box. Everything is there. If you head to there, you'll find all the useful links and anything you need to find. Step number one is you're going to go to the very bottom row of your pixel grid. Remember, these steps are the same. No matter what pixel grid you're doing, whether you're doing a character, text, anything, graphic, please follow the same steps. So you're going to find the bottom row of your pixel grid and you're going to count how many boxes are in that bottom row. So this is a row. All of these are rows. I've got 33 boxes. Once you have that number, just write it down somewhere or if you have the pattern for this pixel grid or the other patterns that I have on my coffee, it's already going to let you know how many boxes there are and you won't have to do any counting. So you're going to go ahead and make a slip knot. Just remember to keep the number that you counted in your mind or write it down somewhere. Once you have your slip knot, you are going to chain that number. So I've got 33 boxes in my bottom row, so I'm going to chain 33. Make sure that your chains are not too tight. Just make them nice and even. And keep count as you're going to make sure it's the same number as the boxes in your bottom row. Once you've got that number, you are going to do a turning chain, which is just chain one but it doesn't count as a stitch. It's only there to help us start a new row. I know how crusty my nails look. I am so sorry. I promise they'll be cleaned up in the next video. I just really wanted to get this done and I had no time. So I've got 33 chains. You should have the total number of chains as the total number of boxes in your row. And once you've done that, we are going to start our first row. So this is your foundation chain. It is not the first row of your work. It's just there to help you start your work and it doesn't count as a row, so it's the foundation of your work. Your first row is going to start with your first row of single crochet stitches, which is what we're going to do on the foundation chains. So to start your first row, which is this bottom one right over there, you are going to make a turning chain, which is just chain one, and then we're going to completely ignore this turning chain. It's just there to help us start. It doesn't really count as a stitch. You're going to skip this one and you're going to insert your hook into that second chain and you're going to make a single crochet so pull up a loop and then yarn over and pull through both the loops on your hook like that that is your first single crochet that is your first stitch that means that it's also your very first box that one right there so one single crochet stitch is one box. Now you're going to go ahead and insert your hook into all of the chains and you're going to insert one single crochet in each chain. So at the end you should have the same number of stitches as the number of boxes in your pixel grid. So I've got 33 over here so at the end I should have done 33 single crochets. I'm going to do my last single crochet into the very last chain and I kept count, so starting from that very first single crochet that I did till the very last one, I've got 33 single crochets. It's completely normal for your work to curl like this, don't worry, the curl is going to go away by itself as you do more rows. Now most pixel grids have some sort of background color and you need to kind of do a few rows with that background color before you need to change color. So if this is the case, follow along with me. However, if you've got a different color in your second row, then please skip to the part where I show you how to change colors or attach a new color. So I did all white single crochet stitches. In my second row, I've got all white boxes again. So that means that I'm going to do all white single crochet stitches and there are no color changes in this row. Every time you want to start a new row, regardless of what pixel grid design you're doing, you're going to repeat these steps every single time you want to start a new, new row. You're just going to turn your work. After turning your work, don't chain one, don't do anything, don't do any sort of turning chain because they don't give you straight edges. To get a really nice, clean, straight edge, you're just going to turn your work and you're going to start your next row from that very first single crochet. You're going to insert your hook into that first single crochet and that's it. You're just going to start your row with another single crochet 
and then go ahead and insert one single crochet in each stitch. Remember, every single crochet you make is one box in your pixel grid. I just want to show you how I'm inserting my stitches. So I'm going to show you this way. Do you see this braided V part? That's what I put onto my hook like that. And then I just single crochet. Here I'm going to be doing my very last single crochet. Remember, that is your chain one at the end. That is not your stitch. If you're confused, you can always count your stitches and make sure you've got the same number as boxes to know if you're on the right track. All right, now we have done our two rows and in the next row I have to switch colors. When you're working on your pixel grid, here's how you're gonna follow the rows. It's kind of like snakes. So you had your chain, all right? This was your chain, it went this way. Then you did your first row, so it went this way. And then you did your second row, so it went this way, kind of like snakes. Now you're gonna do your third row, so you're gonna go this way. Does that make sense? So you're kind of just gonna alternate right, left, right, left, right, left as you're doing the rows. Don't just always start your rows from one side and don't always start them from the other side. The third row is gonna go this way. So you're gonna start counting your boxes from this side, usually from the right side or whatever side you have. So I'm just gonna zoom in over here and I'm gonna go to my third row, one, two, three. I'm gonna count how many boxes I have of white and then how many boxes I have of the other color that I want to use. I'm going to use black. So I'm going to go ahead and count. One, two, three, four. So I've got to do 12 boxes of white, and then I'm going to switch colors to the next color. And that is how you do it. So count how many boxes you need to do with the same color before you need to switch colors. And remember, every time you want to start a new row, turn your work. And starting from here is going to be my first box. So one, two, so far I've done 10 stitches or 10 boxes and now I need to do a total of 12. That means I'm going to do 11 and then in my last stitch with this color, which is my 12th stitch, I'm going to switch colors. So I'm going to insert my hook and I'm going to pull up a loop, but I'm not going to complete the single crochet. Instead, I'm going to complete the single crochet with the color that I want to switch to or change to. You always change to the next color on the last stitch of the current color. My current color is white and I had to do 12 stitches. So since I'm on the 12th stitch, which is my last stitch with white, I'm going to switch to the next color, which is going to be black for me. So I'm going to show you how to do that and you're going to repeat these steps every time you want to attach a new color to your work. So to attach a new color, you're going to make a little loop with it and you're going to complete the single crochet with that loop, pulling it through like that. And you can leave a little bit of an end here. Then you can just tighten the color that you were using before just a little bit to make it more secure. And now you can work with your new color. So I have made black my working yarn. This is my working yarn now. I need to do three stitches with black and then I need to switch to white again. So here's what I'm gonna do. My white is just gonna be hanging here. So now, since this is the same color, I'm kind of going to work over this end. So I'm just going to move it a little bit to this side and I'm just going to work over it. So I need to do three stitches with black. So I'm going to do one, two, and since the third stitch is my last stitch with black, I'm going to switch colors here. So I'm going to bring the single crochet up, but I'm not going to complete it. I'm going to let the black go to the back side. This is my back side now and I'm going to get the white and I'm just going to grab the white and I'm going to pull it through like that. And the white is just going to be floating here like that. So that is the floating yarn method and it works amazing. You just have to make sure that it's not too tight. Make it a little bit loose. Now I can work with the white until I need to switch back to black again. I am not going to be working over this end anymore. It's secure enough. So I had to do 12 stitches with white. I did 11 and I'm going to be doing my last one and then I'm going to switch to black. So what you're going to do on your last stitch is you're going to insert your hook, but before you pull this up, so I forgot to do this step in the previous stitch where I changed colors, so sorry about that, but here's the proper way to do it. You're going to insert your hook and you're going to grab the yarn that you want to switch to and you're going to float it to where your hook is. So look, I'm just floating it here on top of my hook like that. And then I'm gonna get my working yarn, stretch this out. So 
So make sure that it's not too tight. Make sure it's loose, nice and loose, because you're gonna float it. And then you're gonna switch colors here. So I'm gonna bring up the white. Remember, this is my last stitch with white, so it's my 12th stitch since I had to do 12 boxes. And then I'm just gonna let the white go because I have to switch colors here. And I'm gonna complete the single crochet with black. Look at how I'm holding onto the white to keep it secure at the back. And now I can work with black. And my white is just gonna be floating there. It's just gonna be there on the back side and my black is gonna be here. I'm gonna show you one more time. All right, now I've got a lot of color switches coming up. Now I'm gonna show you how to switch when you're working on the back side of your work. With this floating yarn method, you're gonna have a very clear back side where you're gonna float all your yarns and then you're gonna have a front side which is completely clean like this. Every time you're floating your yarn, make sure that it's on the back side and not the front side. I'm gonna show you how. So when you're working on the opposite side or when the back side is towards you, here's how you're gonna do it. So I just have to do three single crochets with white. That means that I'm gonna switch on the third and last. All right, I gotta switch here. And how am I gonna float the black? I'm gonna bring it up to where the stitch is. I'm gonna put it on my hook. And then once it's on my hook, I'm gonna go into the stitch where I wanna work. So now my black has floated. I'm just gonna move it back to this side because I'm gonna be working in this direction. I know it's a bit hard to see, but I just floated it there. Now I'm gonna grab onto the white. Since I have to switch colors here, I'm gonna cross the white to the back side. So usually you'd leave it there, but this is your front side, so you can't leave the white there. You have to bring it to this side, leave it on the back side, and now you can switch to black. All right, now I gotta do one with black and then switch to white. White is already here, I'm just gonna put it here. I'm gonna put my black under, so I floated the white, grab onto the black. Now again, I'm gonna cross it to the back side because you can't leave these on this side. They have to be always to the back side where you're floating your yarn. And then I'm gonna switch to white. I'm gonna go ahead and do 12 with white and then I'm gonna show you one more time how to do it. I've done 11, I'm gonna do 12, which is my last, so I have to float the black. My black is here, so I'm gonna bring it to where I wanna float it. And I'm gonna put it on my hook. So look, it's gonna be on my hook. Then I'm gonna go into the stitch where I wanna work or change colors. I'm gonna make sure this is nice and loose, like that. And then I'm gonna bring up the white and I'm gonna switch colors here since it's my last stitch with white. And yes, your yarn is gonna get very tangled doing this. And there we go. Now all my yarn is gonna be floated on this back side while the front side remains nice and clean for my design. Now I'm just gonna work with this. I've got to do two with black, so I did one, and then over here I got a switch, so I'm just going to float the white. I don't know if I'm using the proper terms, but I just like calling it that. And then cross it to the back side, and then switch to white. Now I can do white. So over here I need to switch colors. Whenever you want to switch colors, you float the color that you want to switch to. So I'm going to float the black. So you just bring it to where the stitch is and you insert your hook in that stitch. Look, I'm not inserting the end, I'm just inserting my hook into the stitch. Floating the black. Bring up the white, I cross it over because all your ends should be on the back side. And then I switch to black, like that. And there you go. So here I'm working with multiple colors, I'm going to use this as an example now. I'm going to start a new row, same steps as always, this is my front side and this is my back side where I'm floating all my yarn. So I'm going to show you how I work on the back side with multiple colors, then I'm going to show you how I work on the front side with multiple colors. So you'll have a lot more examples to work with. I'm going to start a new row by turning my work. Now I've got to do four single crochets with white because I've got four white boxes. So I'm just going to do them. Three, and then on my fourth stitch, I'm going to change colors because it's my last stitch with white. I'm going to change to black and I'm going to do just one black. So I'm going to float the yarn. I just put it on my hook like this and then I insert my hook into the stitch where I want to work in. And then I'm going to bring up the white. Now I can't leave the white here. That's my right side. So I'm just going to cross over the white over here. I'm going to make black my working yarn and I'm going to switch to black just one stitch with black and then I need to switch to this light pink over here so I'm gonna float the white float the pink so you just float the color that you want to switch to 
And then I'm going to make a single crochet with black, but I'm not going to complete it because I have to switch to pink because it's four white, one black, and then I think I've got ten pinks. So look, I've crossed the black over to this side. None of my ends are going on the other side. Everything is on this side. And now I'm just going to do all my stitches with pink and then I'm going to show you when I'm going to switch next. So I needed to do 10 single crochets with pink. I did 9 and over here I'm going to do my 10th one and then I need to do 1 black. So that means I have to switch to black over here. I'm going to bring the black and I'm going to float it. That means I'm just going to bring it here and then I'm going to insert my hook under it into the stitch. I'm going to make the single crochet cross over the pink to the back side and then I'm gonna do black. Now I have to switch to dark pink after doing one black so I need to float the dark pink because I have to use it next. I'm just gonna bring it to my hook like this and then I'm gonna insert my hook into the stitch, do one single crochet with black and then switch to dark pink. So once you get the hang of it, you don't really have to think a lot. You just go along with it and it comes to you really easily. It just takes a lot of practice. So now I'm going to do five with dark pink and then I'm going to switch to black. And yeah, that's basically how you go along. Everything is on the back side. And now I'm going to show you how to work on the front side. Now I'm going to do my fifth stitch, which is my last stitch with white. So that means I need to switch to my next color. I'm going to be switching to black. So I'm going to insert my hook. And I'm going to get the black and I'm going to float it on top of my hook. Make this my working yarn. Make sure it's loose. Please never pull it too tight. So look, the yarn that I want to switch to is going to be on top of my hook. Then I'm going to grab the color that I was using, make half a single crochet, let it go to the back because I want to switch, and then switch colors. So hopefully that makes more sense now. And every time you want to attach a new color, you're going to repeat the steps that I showed you in the beginning of the video, and then you'll have another color to float. And that is how you're going to continue all the way around. Also, whenever you're done using a color and you don't want to use it anymore for your pixel grid, or you don't need to use it again for a couple of rows, for example, brown, I don't need to use brown until like two, three rows later, you can always just cut it. Just cut it. <laughs> and don't stress yourself out. I highly recommend just cutting it and then weaving it in or tying it to one of the floating yarns. So when you're done using the color and you've only got your background color left, cut the yarn but leave a little bit of a long end so don't cut it too close. Cut it a little bit farther apart and that is how you're going to end using your colors. And when I need to use brown and dark pink, which I have cut over here because I got overwhelmed, I'm going to show you how I'm going to add them back and continue like normal. So now I need to do four stitches with dark pink, but I don't have any dark pink over here, so I'm going to attach it into my last stitch that I'm doing with black over here. So I'm just going to attach it like how we've been attaching everything else. You leave your single crochet half completed and then you complete it with the yarn that you want to attach. And no, this won't make any difference if you attach it back again, and I'm just going to continue like normal and just work over the end so it gets attached a bit more securely. And there, I just continue like normal with whatever number my pattern says, and everything is the exact same. So don't stress yourself out if it's hard for you to continue with your tangled yarn. Just cut it and you can always reattach it in the next row. Another tip that I have is to take the yarn that you want to change to under your ends. So this is a pink that I'm not going to be using until the next row. And I want to switch to this light pink. So when I'm switching, instead of taking the pink on top of this dark pink, which I don't, which I'm not using right now, I'm going to take it from under like this, just so that this is more accessible to me for the next row. We don't really need to use this again, so it's fine if this is under. That's just another little tip that I have for you guys. So the yarn that you want to switch to, keep that under the ends that you're not working. So look, I'm just going to leave this there, and I'm going to work with pink now. So these are just some of my little tips and tricks that I just want to make sure that you guys know to make it as easy for you as possible. But once again, I've got to switch to the white all the way over here. Instead of taking the white over my dark pink and over my light pink, I'm going to take it from under them so that these are more accessible for my next row for when I need to use them again. 
So what I mean is I'm just going to take it from under like that. I'm going to make it float under the ends of the other colors like that. And then I'm going to switch to it. So now it's under the ends that I'm not using and I can just easily switch to it while the other colors are still accessible for me for my next row. And yeah, then I can stretch it out. Now when I'm doing my next row, it won't be hard for me to reach these because they'll already be on top and I can work them. However, if this was under, then this would pull at this and then you just have even more tangles. It's just a little thing that I like doing to make my work a little bit easier for myself. 